in the problems of tomorrow. If you start praying today, you are solving the problems of 10 years time that is to come. If you start praying today, you are solving the problems that are to come in 20 years time. Your prayers today is the answers to your tomorrow's challenges. Desire to pray. Do you know it is only Christians that take prayers very simply. It's only Christians. If you look at every other faith, prayer is, a, is part and parcel of their life. It's a lifestyle. They don't pray because they are hungry. They don't pray because they are sick. Christians come to church because they have an, an issue in their life. Okay, I came because my, my brother or my son or my father is no more talking to me. Oh, I came to church because pastor, I lost my job. Oh, pastor, I came to church because there's a lump in my, at the side of my body. Reasons to pray. Reasons to seek God. It's only Christians. Let's not take grace for granted. Let's not what, take grace for granted. Every other faith prays. Five times a day. Three times a day. Two times a day. There's hardly any faith that does not pray multiple times daily and they pray in storms, they pray in sunshine, they pray under the moons, they pray in every situation, in every circumstance they pray, they don't pray as a conditional thing you know, oh I have to pray today because I just realized uh, something is happening that is very bad in my life prayer should not be conditional it should be part and parcel of believers of our life. It should be part and parcel of a believer's life. Say with me, Father. Father. I want to hear the church say, Father. Father. I am asking for grace this morning to pray. Give me that grace, Lord. I need a grace. I need a grace. Restore that prayer life that I always wanted. Lord, restore it. The grace to kneel to pray. The grace to seek you, Lord. The grace to worship you in truth and in spirit. Lord, give me that grace. In the name of Jesus. The church must stop expecting a thousand pounds answer when they give a hundred pence prayers. Amen. We don't pray that we expect, oh, why, why did this happen in my life? Oh, Lord, why did this not happen in my life? But yet you have not prayed. We are expecting a thousand pounds, a thousand dollar answers from God. But you, are not, you have not even offered a, a one pence prayer to God. <coughs> and that's why you see a lot of people when I do evangelism, most of the time each week to people, talking about Jesus on the streets, on the high streets, preaching. I see people say, oh, if there's God, why did it happen in my life? Then I ask you, do you know? And then I not ask them, tell me how much you know about God. And they don't know anything. <laughs> you don't know anything about God. But God has to be blamed for everything that happens. A thousand pounds answers without even giving a one pence prayers to God. But you're expecting a million pounds answers. On the streets, I come across that almost daily. Oh, there, I don't, I don't believe in God. I'm disappointed. I said, who disappointed? I said, God disappointed. And I said, how did God disappoint me? Oh, but my mom just died. I said, oh, so because your mom just died, so God has failed you. So yeah. I said, okay, tell me, do you know anything? Who is Jesus? Tell me what you know about Jesus. And they haven't got a clue. Come on. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 12, verses 5. Let's go back to the Bible. Acts chapter 12, verses 5. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at the Bible. I'm talking about prayers. A prayerless life. Acts chapter 12. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read. 
Acts 12 verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. The power of prayers. Peter was where? In prison. And prayer was done. Was What happened? Prayer was made without season. Come, 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 come. Prayer was said without season. By who? The church. Unto who? God. For who? Peter. Come. Prayer was made to God. The church gathered and began to cry to God. Let's pray. And when the apostle, the disciple, Peter, is in prison. Are you in any prison? It might not be a virtual, I mean a physical prison. It might be all, all other types of prisons that you have you are found yourself today. As we pray today, the prison doors will open. Amen. I said again, as we pray today, the prison doors will open. Amen. It might not be a physical prison, like a prison, like Holloway prison. Your prison today might be sickness. Your prison might be maybe failed dreams, failed visions, failing in life. That's a prison. You can't come out of it. Everything you try to do, you fail. Everything you lay your hands on, you fail. Everything you try to gather, scatters. That's a prison. It means you are locked. Success door is locked to you. You're going to come out. Amen. The power of Jehovah will pull you out. Amen. The Holy Ghost will come upon that very prison and shatter the door and you will step out. Amen. Victory will be yours. Amen. I say again, victory will be yours. Amen. After today, victory will be yours. Amen. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in us. Amen. And that quickening anointing can quicken any situation and give you victory. Amen. And I'm prophesizing this morning, victory will be yours. Amen. That prison of failure, that door will be open, you're going to come out, Amen. you will no more do things and begin to fail you. There's a, there was this, this man, the cab driver. I just remember this testimony again. This cab driver, he, was, he did this cab exams, you know, the black cabs. You know, he did it, I think, nine times. Or was it the doctor? There were two testimonies similar. There was the one was a medical doctor here, and the one was a cab driver. Anyway, let me tell you the cab driver. It was similar. The doctor was the same. He wrote the, the medical exam to practice as a medical doctor here ten times, and he failed over a period of maybe ten years or twelve years or so many years. This doctor, and then I think a member or one of you invited him here, and he came. And guess what? I told him. You have a great vision for humanity. The, the profession of being a medical doctor is a good profession to help humanity. But Satan is blocking it. But we got to pray. And it was prayer that released him from that prison of failure. I told him prophetically, I said, you are going to write it the 11th time. But this time you come back here with your paper, your certificate as a qualified medical doctor in the United, United Kingdom. And truly and truly, according to the word of God, he went to write that exam number 11 and he passed. Amen. Come, come. And he passed. Amen. The cab, black cab driver was something similar. He couldn't. Every, every time he goes for the test, he will fail. <laughs> I think his own was nine times. And again, I said, okay, now let's pray. The power of prayers. 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 The tenth time he went and he passed the exam. Today he drives his black car. Even though I never saw him again. You know some people, remember what I said earlier on? They come to, they come to pray because there is a problem. I've never seen any of them. But that's what they, they came to testify. But the good news is at least they gave the testimony. Amen. God will put a testimony of joy in your mouth. Amen. A testimony of great laughter in your mouth. Amen. I see a celebration. Amen. I see a celebration. Amen. I see a celebration. Amen. I see a gathering of people Amen. with great celebration Amen. in their midst. I see a celebration. Amen. In your lives, I see a celebration. Amen. I see God changing situations. Amen. The seasons are about to change. Amen. I said the seasons is about to change. Amen. It is about to change. Amen. Somebody shout the Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without season. By the church unto God for him. And when Herod. Would have brought him forth. The same night. Remember. Take note. Peter was sleeping. Between two soldiers. The same night. Maybe Peter would have been beheaded. Because that was the way they behead most believers in those days. That's why the Bible says Herod would have brought him, maybe to behead him. Nobody knows. Amen? Because he's already in prison. So maybe he was to behead him. The same night, verse 6, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison and smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off and his hands. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind, unto, bind, on, thy, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast that garment about thee and what? Follow me. The prison doors open. Amen. Amen. The prison doors opened. The chains that held him bound fell. Amen? And the angel that was sent led him out of the prison. Why did all this happen? By accident? Why did all this happen? My, by magical works? How did all this happen? An imagination? How did all this happen? A dream? By Peter? No. It was a reality. By prayers. The prison doors opened. The chains holding hell that held him down was broken. I ask God to break chains. Amen. I say it again today. Let chains be broken. Amen. I cannot hear that amen clearly. I said let chains in your life be broken. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So this Acts chapter 12 tells you that bondages can be broken. Mm. Are you in a bondage? Mm. Bondages can be what? Broken. broken. I'm giving you two or three te testimonies of people's lives. Not distant people. People that are into the church. God broke every bondage that they found themselves in. So bondages can what? Be broken. Let's look at the Bible again. Joshua chapter 10 verse 12. Joshua 10 verse 12. Thank you Jesus. Joshua chapter 10 verse 12. And I'm going to read. Joshua 10, 12. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord. Joshua chapter 10, verse 10. I mean, chapter 10, verse 12. Then, then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, and Joshua said in the sight of Israel, listen to this, Son, stand still upon Gideon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Verse 13. And listen to that. And the sun stood still. And the, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon who? The enemies. It's not this written in the book of Joshua. So the, the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. And hasted not to go down about what? A whole day. And there was no day, verse 14. There was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. God answers prayers. Amen. There was no day like that, verse 14, that the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. For the Lord fought for you. For the Lord fought for you. For the Lord fought for the church. For the Lord 
fought for his children. Amen. There was no day. Listen to this testimony. A man prayed and spoke to the sun. A man prayed and spoke to the moon. The sun, the moon are firmaments of nature. They are ordinances of time and season. But yet, they obeyed the voice of a man. By prayers. By prayers. By prayers. God dismantled natural protocols. God is the God of process. God likes to follow his everything he does is systematic. I mean it's systemic. God is the God of process. 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 When God wanted to create the heaven and the earth, he didn't just wake up and created heaven and the earth in one day. He followed the process of what first day I create light, second day I create this, third day I create this, fourth day I create man, fifth day I create animal. God is the God of what? Process. And God maintains process. He's systemic. But when man prayed, God broke his process. When man prayed, God dismantled protocol. Amen. The moon obeyed the voice of God. Do you know, imagine, if we wake up one day on earth in this generation and the sun remains for 24 hours. That's what the Bible says. I'm just saying exactly what the Bible said. One man prays and says, sun, stand still. Don't move. Moon, remain at that value of Adam. Don't move. So there is just day. There is a night. Come. 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 There is what? Day. There is a night. There is just day. There is a night. What would you say? It happened in the Bible. God had to go against his own protocol. God had to go against his own process. God had to command had to obey the voice of a man, a human being like you and I. I see someone here today. There's a protocol causing delay in your life. There's an administrative protocol. Maybe your promotion. Maybe an application you have made. There's a protocol that is going to be broken. Amen. Hi, come on. You missed it. The church missed it. I say it again, the church missed this prayer. I say, I see a protocol. God is about to break protocol because of you. Amen. God is about to break his process, an administrative process because of you. Amen. I said again, I see God breaking a process because of you. Amen. Maybe in your case, it is administrative. Something is holding your promotion. Protocols are holding your promotion. Maybe it's an application. I see the Lord stepping in. Amen. And I see that protocol being broken. Amen. God will answer you. Amen. I say it again. God will answer you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can somebody shout a Lord hallelujah to you? Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Let's look at the Bible one more time. Let's look at the Bible one more time. Let's open to the book. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Exodus chapter 17. Let's look at Exodus 17 verse 8. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you glory. Exodus chapter 17. And I'm going to read. Then came Amalek. Somebody said with me, Amalek. Amalek. For as long as we live, we shall have enemies. Amen? Amen? For as long as we live, we will always have enemies. People that envy your business. Oh, this woman that has a big shop that sells so many clothes. Oh, this woman that has a big uh, business that does so much import. People will always envy you. People will always become your enemy. Not because you have hurt them. Not because you have offended them. A lot of enemies that we have, 
is because of enemies. But God will give you victory over such enemies. Amen. Exodus 17 verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to who? Joshua, choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Prayers. Come. I will stand on the hill. You go fight with your men, Joshua. But I will stand on the hill on a higher on a higher level where I can watch you people fight. And I will hold the rod of God and go into prayers. Prayer of victory. Prayer to overcome what the Bible calls strong enemies. Enemies we cannot defeat naturally. Enemies we have no power over. We have to depend on supernatural grace and strength to overcome. That was what Moses said. I mean, that's what Moses did. He said, you know what, Joshua? You go with your men to fight this man, these enemies. But I will go on the mountain to pray. Sometimes in life, I will say this again, sometimes in life, we got to know this. There are certain problems in our lives we just got to go on the on our knees on our knees to cry out to God there are certain challenges that come our way we just got to go on our knees to pray there's someone here God is waiting for you to go on your knees and that problem will be over come on come on the Lord is speaking to someone that revelation just came to me. God is waiting for you to go down on your knees with a humble heart and stop complaining. Stop complaining. Because God wants to empower you to overcome after you go on your knees. But humbly, the Lord said, humbly and stop complaining. Let's look at the Bible. Exodus 17. Verse 10. Obedience. So Joshua did as Moses had said. Like the Lord spoke to me. Concerning you. This morning. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hall. Went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass. When Moses held up his hand, what happened? Israel prevailed. Israel prevailed. You see that? And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. The power of prayer. The power of what? Prayer. Moses lifted up his hand. Even though he was aged. He was an, he was, he was an aged man. He was old. Each time he lifted up his hand, God gave victory to the people of Israel. Amen. God will give you victory. Amen. I say, as you lift up your hands in prayers, God will give you victory. Amen. I say, as you lift up your hands again, God will give you victory. Amen. As you lift up your hands again for the third time, the Bible said a threefold cord cannot be easily broken. I say, he will give you victory. Amen. Over that strong enemy, victory. Amen. Over that problem, victory. Amen. Over that mountain that stands before you, victory. Amen. Over that valley that you have stepped into, victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The power of prayers. The power of prayers. I'll give you one more example before we pray. The power, somebody tell your neighbor the power of prayers. The power of prayers. Tell your neighbor you are victorious. You are what victorious. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 27. First Samuel chapter 1 verses 27. Thank you Jesus. Oh Salabakuria. Mandala basuria. Zikata la basuria. First Samuel what? Chapter 127. Manduria basuria. Let's see where we read this from. Oh thank you Jesus. 
Father, we thank you. Verse 27. For this child I prayed. Look at that. Who is speaking? Anna. For this child, Anna said, I prayed. And the Lord has given me my word, petition. Come on. Somebody tell someone next week, petition. Tell them God has granted your petition. Say it loudly. God has granted your petition. Say to her or he, God has answered your prayers. Come on. Anna experienced what the world calls delay. I don't believe in delays. For those of you that are old members of this ministry, I preach once on what we call delay, in quote. It's nothing like that. Samuel was born at the time that was right. Samuel was born at the year that was right. Samuel was born at the hour that was right. Samuel was born at the minute that was right. Samuel was not a victim of delay. The mom, Anna, was not a victim of delay. She was a victim of God's plan and purpose for humanity. Hallelujah. There was no delay. Samuel could not have been born early. And Samuel could not have been born later. So if Samuel could not have been born early and could not have been born later, so how come can we say he went through delay? No. Samuel was born to replace the sons of Eli. At the time that God needed a judge, God needed a prophet, because those he had put in place had failed. Eli had failed, the son of Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli had failed God. They were sleeping with church members. They were arbitrarily taking money from the temple members. So they had failed God. So God fixed a time for these two priests and their father to be replaced. So what do you, what do you mean? You are here this morning. I want to tell you, you are not going through any delay. Where you are right now is the right time for God. Where you are right now is the time that God has set for his plan and purpose in your life to come to pass. Where you are right now is the time God has set for him to fulfill that vision he God has put in you. He put it there. When when Elijah went on Mount Carmel to challenge 450 prophets of Baal, Elijah only prayed. Do you notice that? One prophet against 450 prophets. Come, come, come. One prophet. Elijah only prayed. Do you know that? He only prayed. And God answered him against 450 other fake prophets. When we pray, God answers. Anna cried to God and God answered. Anna did not experience delay. Oh, I didn't get it like a woman who came so, but I did this delay of getting the job. I said, delay? You sure? Tell me what. Delay in getting the job? It's not a delay. By the time God gave this man a job, guess what happened? The job God gave him, all the friends of this man who had jobs, things going on for them, he began to give them jobs because they left his own job to come and join this man that got job even though he called it delay because God, the job God gave him was a high paying job. Not just that, he became a recruiter. So he was able to recruit so many people into his new job, including his friends who were laughing at him and said, oh, you are still not working? God has a plan for you. Amen. God has a plan for you. Amen. God has a plan for you. Amen. There's nothing that happens on earth. I used to, a lot of people used to say, ah, man of God, look at Ukraine. Look at what is happening. It's going to be a world war. The world is going to be destroyed. You know what I told him? On the streets. I said the world is going to be destroyed. By who? I asked. By who? He said, oh, by all the superpowers and with nuclear. You know, so, you know, you could see him very afraid. And I smiled. I said, you cannot destroy what you did not create. 
Number one. Amen. Amen. You cannot destroy what you did not create. It's not possible. You can only destroy what you created. That's number one. Number two. And I asked him, I said, you are afraid that the world is coming to an end. I said, are you a Christian? He said, oh, I used to go to church in those days. My mom used to take me to church. Oh, I said, but you don't go any longer. He said, yeah. So I said, so you don't know anything about the scripture, do you? He said, no. So I said, can I now educate you a bit? He said, yeah. Then I opened the scripture and began to show him in the scripture everything that has been happening in the world documented in the Bible. The wars is documented. The viruses is documented. The hatred is documented. The, 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 the natural disasters is documented. Storm Peter, Storm Michael, Storm Joseph, Storm Silas, Storm Margaret, Storm everything is all documented. And that's when the Lord eliminated his mind. And he realized man cannot destroy the world. His spirit was revived. You are where you are sometimes because of lack of knowledge. You are where you are sometimes because of lack of understanding. You are where you are sometimes because of lack of wisdom. That's why you are where you are. When God's wisdom is ejected into a particular situation or circumstance, guess what? You begin, that's why God says, I will make a way where there seems to be no way. Rise up on your feet. Let's clap for Jesus. Rise up on your feet. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's appreciate Jesus. Let's appreciate it this morning. Lift up your hands to God and begin to worship Him. Lift up your hands to God and begin to praise Him. Begin to praise the Lord. Begin to praise Him. Begin to speak to God this hour. The power of prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer can bring you out of sickness. Prayer can bring you out of every form of calamity. No matter the calamities you find yourself in. The power of prayer, prayer can bring a turn around to the line. Prayer can change that child. You are so concerned about your child. Prayer can change the life of that child. You just got to give God a chance. Give him a chance to step in. Welcome Jesus into your situation. It is not just enough to say I go to church. It is not just enough to say I'm a Christian. No. Listen to me. It's not enough to say I'm a Christian. It's not enough to say I was born a Christian. It is not enough to say I'm, I'm, I, I used to follow my parents to church. It's not even enough to say I walk in the church. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus. And your greatest gift from God is the gift of prayers. Come. The gift of what prayers? Yes. Every now and again you, your body might be weak. But your body cannot, should not give up prayers. Yes, the body are human. I'm human. We are all human. Yes, the body can be weak. But the body should never, never, say it again, never give up prayers. Your body should never, never give up prayer. In fact, when you are unwilling to pray, that is when you should pray. Force yourself to pray. Force yourself. Say, I've got to pray. If you are not ready to pray, then begin to sing. Sing to the Lord. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. For your goodness, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. For your mercies, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, 
Father. Begin to speak to God with the beginning, consigning your needs. 